Well, uh, I just want to start off by thanking Carl um, for uh, inviting uh, us to uh, participate and comment uh, here uh, today. And it's, um, uh, I'm Mike Walsh, I'm the CEO of uh, U.S. Uh, Legal Markets for LexisNexis. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great thing to be here and to see some of the examples of uh, innovation that um, folks have presented to us today from, from the government. And uh, the GovPulse team, um, Rob, Harlan, um, Roy, um, Ray, uh, I think it's, um, it's terrific what you guys are doing. And it's great to see, uh, great to see those examples. So uh, nice to be here and nice to see that. Um, I'm here um, not just as the uh, CEO of uh, uh, U.S. Legal Markets for LexisNexis, but as a, a lawyer and a citizen uh, of the United States of America. And I recognize the critical role that access to justice uh, plays in our society. And I recognize the importance uh, that access to legal information uh, plays in that uh, mission. Uh, at LexisNexis, uh, we look at our mission as one of fundamentally supporting uh, the rule of law across uh, the globe um, as the basis of any civilized society. And I believe that um, we all share that uh, in common uh, today. We have about 3,000 lawyers um, at LexisNexis that are employed uh, by the company. And they join our roughly 13,000 uh, non-legal colleagues um, that work hard to support uh, the rule of law uh, around the world. Um, we work uh, free of charge, for example, with the Southern African uh, Litigation Center to provide access uh, to the country's entire uh, legal content, uh, not dissimilar in some ways to um, uh, what is uh, going on here today and the mission here uh, today. We also work free of charge uh, to provide uh, uh, standard access to the legislative code in Iraq. Um, we got approached. Um, by a colonel uh, in the military uh, who asked us to uh, work with them uh, in, su in supplying the, um, uh, the laws to, uh, to Iraq. Uh, we also work free of charge with the U.S. State Attorney Generals to help train um, on enforcement for professionals with respect to the needs of uh, human trafficking. So these are just some of the examples of things that, um, that, that we do uh, that we look at as consistent with, uh, with the mission of the rule of law. Um, and last year, we donated about $5 million in cash and in-kind contributions uh, and thousands of employee volunteer hours uh, to work to support the rule of law and uh, uh, pro bono uh, across the globe. And I and, I and and our employees believe deeply in that mission, and we are uh, very committed uh, to supporting uh, that mission. And advancing the rule of law is something that um, uh, LexisNexis and I think many of the folks around this room here have in common. And um, access to basic legal content is uh, at the very definition uh, of the uh, rule of law, in, in, in my mind at least. Uh, laws must be clear. Uh, they've got to be publicized. They've got to be stable, uh, fair, and accessible um, to all. Uh, at the same time, um, providing access to basic uh, legal content uh, should not be confused with the role that legal publishers uh, like LexisNexis and others uh, play in the market. Uh, our business model is predicated on the value that we can really bring and add on top of um, that uh, uh, legal content. Uh, we put more than 300,000 cases a year uh, as an example through our editorial enhancement process, uh, resulting in about uh, 800,000 uh, subsequent editing jobs. Uh, in addition to citation validation, uh, standardized formatting, opinion summaries, and headnotes uh, essential to the outcomes of each case, uh, our thousands of lawyers routinely bring to the court's attention uh, items within new case law uh, data that are missing or incorrectly referenced. Um, so this is something that our lawyers spend uh, lots of time scouring through and uh, helping to ensure the accuracy of the uh, legal foundation in our society. We've got lawyers who review more than 1,000 cases a day and link uh, those cases to other cases via Shepherds, uh, a service that I'm sure everybody here is familiar with. Uh, and this is a process that's been refined uh, for more than 100 years. And there's hundreds of thousands of lawyers across the country who depend 
on providing those accurate, uh, accurate and, um, uh, and relevant uh, links. Uh, so our analytics combine multiple data sources and help lawyers determine whether or not a case is good law. And we also track hundreds of thousands of legislative and regulatory developments and changes across our federal and state governments uh, each year uh, to keep our, our statutory and regulatory databases um, current. And our analytics not only give lawyers uh, the confidence in the data, but help them work faster and more efficiently. Um, and to support that, we've integrated our content into numerous software tools um, to enable our customers to do their work uh, more easily and efficiently and effective. Uh, these are tools like ones that we own, for example, like um, a case map, but they also um, uh, involve um, you know, ge general software tools in the marketplace. Uh, so we recently partnered with Microsoft, for example. We're integrating all of our content uh, into Word um, and uh, SharePoint and Outlook, so you can uh, seamlessly access that content uh, as you use those tools. Basically, we, we uh, you know, learned, and it's pretty obvious, that um, our customer base spends a huge chunk of their time in those tools, so we wanted to be where our customers are, and that's effectively what we do. We, whether it's an iPad, an iPhone, uh, software tools on the web, we seek to be where our customers are and, and um, add value uh, to the process. So those are just some of the examples of what we do with our um, many thousands of lawyers um, to help add value to legal content. And each year we invest uh, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to improve upon these processes. And that's not just in building out uh, editorial content, but that's also um, technology and fabrication processes, uh, et cetera. And over the, the uh, hundreds of years, really, that these services have supported the uh, legal society across the globe, we and other companies like us um, have accumulated significant experience in how to ensure the highest uh, quality standards uh, and to make sure that our customers get what they want in a timely and accurate fashion. And we believe that's a very, very important thing um, uh, to support um, the legal foundation uh, of society because you've got to be able to rely on, um, on accuracy. So we welcome the chance to join this, uh, this conversation. Uh, on the merits of a central repository for uh, raw legal data. Um, and whatever disagreements there may be on the best way to achieve standardized free public domain content access, uh, there can be no doubt that the effort embraces the fundamental concepts of the rule of law and the noblest intentions of uh, the people uh, who value it. I thought Tim did a nice job articulating the uh, challenges that any um, uh, publisher or service provider in the industry encounters um, when uh, seeking to provide uh, content um, uh, to society. And they are significant and they are, they are uh, uh, costly. And some of the questions I've just been jotting down um, as I've been listening to the, the many uh, participants that I think are ones that this group and others will probably need to, to grapple with over time is, you know, who, who is really the audience? Um, uh, that we're, we're seeking to, to address uh, here, and this was raised earlier, but is it the, is it the consumer, is it the lawyer, um, and how do you target those, those audiences? Because um, their needs um, are very different and distinct. How do we ensure uh, accuracy um, in, the, in the effort? Um, the last thing uh, you want is uh, somebody relying on a piece of law that is not a valid law, or is it, that's not um, uh, legitimate or that's been overturned or that there's a so, something out there creating a distinction uh, on it. And so that's an important uh, factor. What are the standards and who sets them and how do they get uh, set? Um, how do we coordinate the myriad of agencies, government entities, et cetera, that are involved in the process? Um, uh, what are the costs of, of, of the approach and, um, and how is that, uh, that managed? Uh, clearly, lots of questions you know, associated with the, uh, the effort. Um, those are just some of the ones I jotted down uh, off the top of my head as I listened to, uh, to the group. So um, that's, uh, that's my context. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit of background on, on, uh, on our business and uh, the role we see uh, for ourselves uh, in, uh, in the industry. And I'll turn it over to another industry participant, uh, Ed Walters. <laughs>